Uh, my name is Oma Lava for all those that wanna know Got a YouTube stepping insta that I named the Omo Show Where I clearly spit the flow, show you around the life I chose So at me if you wanna see how far the story goes Peace family, welcome to the Omo Show I'm Omo, the Afrocentric creatress Here to raise the vibrations of the entire black nation And today I really had something that was planned as a video for you all But last night spirit just kept telling me that I should really really make this video So I'm just deciding to make this video instead Because I feel like there are many women and many men who could benefit from what I'm about to say And just sharing myself And I have been on my journey of becoming just more vulnerable And letting things out as they have happened to me because that is really how we can connect with more people and be able to help each other through our experiences. So I wanted to talk about my experience with domestic violence and um, what I learned from it. So let's just get right into it. Um, I was dating this guy and this only happened to me once, but I was dating this guy, but we weren't in a relationship. He knew that I was talking to other dudes and this guy in particular who I was talking to, I was really, really getting to know him on a level, but we weren't as serious as me and the other guy who I was actually dating. We weren't as serious. We were just really, really getting to know each other. So me being the honest person that I am, I decided to tell him like, look, it's this other guy who I'm really, really into or I'm interested in. This is his name. This is what's up. Just wanted to let you know, because we had said that we were going to keep the lines of communication just open between each other. So I'm thinking everything's all good. He acted like everything was cool. Then I started to realize that he became, he just started being way more self-conscious than what I ever experienced him to be. Like once he found out about somebody else, now all of a sudden he's asking me questions like, like where you been uh what who is you why you take so long to answer the phone just like little stuff and i'm just like what is wrong with you you know like chill homie you know so one time um he was over my house and i guess we were taking a nap and he must have went through my phone and you know what usually happens in those situations um so it's not that he didn't know about the guy. It's just he wasn't happy about the text messages that he saw. He didn't like the text messages that he saw. He got really upset. And then he left. Okay, cool. You know, whatever. I didn't even realize that he was gone. I woke up and he just wasn't there anymore. I kept trying to call him. He didn't answer the phone or whatever the case may be. Or I kept feeling like I was being put to voicemail, which I probably was now that I think about it. But anyway, um, moving forward. The next day, I ended up calling him again, like, what's up? You know, he's like, you know, what's up? You know, so I had this money that we were saving up. He asked me if he could come get that money. So I'm like, all right, that's fine, whatever. So I met him at my house and I, I was on my lunch break at this time. I was working at the time and I was on my lunch break. But anyway, I came back to my house, gave him my money or gave him the money that I had saved up that he had or whatever. And we were walking out of the house and basically, you know, of course, there's a lot of back and forth that's going on before any of this that I'm talking about right now. But the main thing was me asking him, are you sure that this is how you want to end this? Because I thought it was really, really petty, like over some real petty text messages. And he's just like, yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. So, cool, we walking out, and then he starts saying something like, uh, oh, I said, I don't know, he was just really angry, so he just kept saying stuff under his breath, and I was like, I just want to remind you that you had sex with a whole girl, I saw the can con condom wrapper sitting right on your dresser, and I forgave you same day, just, just want to let you know that, that like, so I don't know why you're not giving me that same consideration, but I just wanted to put it out there. He was like, oh, really? That's what we bringing up? That's what we doing? And then I'm just like, I mean, yeah. And he's just like, okay, well, at least she was my ex and not some random. And I was like, oh, okay, so he's some random, huh? Like, you know, I'm talking about the guy who I'm interested in, of course. I'm like, so he's some, some random? He was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And he was like, yeah, fucking slut. So when that happened, when he called me a slut, I pushed him. Like, that's my first instinct, to push him. I pushed him hard. And I was like, stop fucking playing with me. And like I said, at this time, we were outside. And I was walking to my car. So after I pushed him, and I'm like, stop fucking playing with me, or whatever the case may be, 
I hurried up and I like scurried to my car because I saw the look in his face and I was just like, oh shit, I'm not gonna be fucking with him. So I started scurrying into my car and y'all, the only reason why I'm smiling slash laughing is not because it's funny, it's because I just reached that point in my journey where I can actually just laugh and be okay with what what happened because I'm already healing past it. But regardless, so I start scurrying into my car like, oh shit, let me hurry up and get in the car. So I got in the car and I'm like, what? You know, because he's walking over to my car at this point. So when he walked over to my car, um, I could see the fury in his eyes after I had pushed him, you know? So I'm just like, okay, what? You know? And then he's just like, hand me my scarf, man, because he had like this scarf in my car. And I was like, okay, I'll get it for you. Like, I put my hand up, like, okay, I'll get it for you. Hold on, you know. And when I did that and I was trying to reach over, he was like, no, nah, I'll get it. So he's not in my car. He's standing outside of my car, but by the window. And basically, my car door is open, though. So he's standing outside the car. My car door is open, and I'm in a driver's seat. So he's reaching his arm past me to get the scarf. And he's like, no, nah, I'll get it. And, like, when he's reaching his arm over me, he, like, chokes me like this. Like, he puts his arm around my neck, and then he just start hitting me in my face. And literally, to be honest with you, it was like, I can't even tell you how it exactly it happened because it was like this blackout moment. Or, like, it happened so fast that I don't even really know. But either way, he just started hitting me. And I just know I started screaming to, like, the top of my lungs, like, ah! Because, like, I was trying to hit him back, but... Because I was sitting down and he was standing up outside and I was sitting down by my steering wheel, I had a disadvantage and I really didn't have any wiggle room. I didn't have no room to move my hands at all, nothing like that. So either way, moving forward, um, I just screamed, yada, yada. Then at some point, I guess he decided to stop hitting me. I really don't remember how it all happened, to be real, because like I say, it was all in the midst of the moment. I wasn't really recording the details of each moment. So anyway, right after that happened, though, I got out the car, and I'm like, okay, I'm from Chicago, so I don't know if y'all understand, but it's like, you ain't finna, like, just catch me from the back, though. Like, you ain't gonna do that. You're not gonna catch me while I'm sitting down. That's dis that, Like, that's a disadvantage. So when I got out the car... Now I'm like, okay, now, like, I'm ready to squat up now because you done already got me while I was sitting down, but you ain't, like, we finna, we finna squat up. Squat up, I fought him, right? So get out the car, boom, I just start whacking his ass. Like, uh, uh, I, don't, I honestly don't know what happened. Like, I don't know. It was like I was there, but it was kind of like a blackout at the same time so I couldn't even tell you who was swinging where and how many punches I got in I can't even tell you none of that but I just know that I was swinging on that ass and I know I did get some licks in but regardless after that happened I didn't know what else to do because as a black body that's conscious in this in this society and also someone who loves my people and loves him or loved him or whatever the case may be i didn't want him to go to jail or i didn't want the police to get involved basically i felt like that was something that us within the community we could have handled ourselves and that's really how i handled it so right after that moment i'm like okay if i want him to go to jail what the fuck do i do because i'm like i thought before that ever happened to me i thought that i would have killed the man who ever tried to put his hands on me but in that moment I don't know why, but things change for me. But I'll get to that in the end. I actually do kind of know why things change. But regardless, um, so yeah, I just was like, ooh, I'm so mad. I'm just so mad. So I'm just like, ooh, I'm telling your mama, boy, right? So this is, this is the first thought that comes to my mind. Let me tell his mama because me and his mom had a good relationship and I'm already knowing that women, we have an impact in our man's life so regardless i ended up telling his mom and his dad I, I hopped in the car real fast and i met um i hopped in the car real fast and i drove off to his mom's house or whatever the case may be he hopped in the car right behind me and was trying to beat me there but i still beat him ha 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 you know so anyway i got there to tell her what had just happened that made him even more mad so then we ended up fighting again and i'm like oh shit like you know, twice in a row, though, like, he was so upset that I told his mom. But then I ended up telling his dad, too. Because, for me, I didn't know what else to do. It was like, 
I, I, I asked his mom, like, what do you want? Do you want him to go to jail or do you want him to die? Go to jail or die? Go to jail or die? And, of course, she was like, I want him to go to jail then, but, you know, whatever. Like, no mom wants to know that her son just went through, like, just did this, you know. And she was really disappointed. She was really heartbroken because she really, really loves me and all this good stuff. So, anyway, I still didn't end up doing those things because... I guess for me, what, one of the things that I learned out of many things uh, is just that I, I realized that for me, I'm just not a retaliator. Like, I can't, I can't handle situations in retaliation. And my spirit didn't feel right about doing either one of those things. It felt more right about telling his parents because I felt like by telling his parents, maybe having his parents who I know for a fact, he's never seen that shit from them. Like... Being that they know, maybe he would, their disappointment would make him feel something. And I'm really about productivity in our community and what's actually going to make us better people. I'm not here to hurt us. Even when you hurt me, I don't want to hurt you, you know, and that's really what I learned from it. But moving forward, after it all happened, you know, it was around the holidays and I was supposed to be traveling home to Chicago or whatever the case may be um, for uh, the holidays. And... He was supposed to go with me, and we were going to drive uh, my car. But because all of that happened, I believe that I didn't have no way to get home. And I wasn't planning on going home. I was just really, really down. I was really, really shocked. I was just completely just everywhere with it. So um, either way it goes, my sister, she ended up buying me a ticket to come home. She ended up spending money on, like, you know, my groceries and stuff when I, when I got there. You know, when I got there, my granny, she massaged my body down, you know, because I did tell them what happened. And um, I just had a whole support and group of women that were just around me just to be there for me. And it was just really, really lovely. Um, some takeaways from the experience. One of the main takeaways is, like I said, I never thought that would happen to me. And I thought that if it did, I would have killed the person. And I never in my life thought that someone would try to put their hands on me. Like, I really never thought that they would try to put their hands on me. Never. Never. Because I don't give men reasons to. I don't feel like I give men reasons to. And I and I believe in respect and I love my people so much and I love my men so much. I would have never thought somebody would have thought to put their hands on me. But it, it showed me that I wasn't invincible. Like, it was an experience for me to let me know even the things you think will never happen to you, they might just happen to you. And even if you don't deserve it, it still might just happen to you. And you don't know what you're supposed to be learning necessarily in that moment. But one thing I realized that I learned is because I consider myself to be a healer and I consider myself to be one of those people that are really, really there for my women and for us just in general... That experience was necessary because I realized that there are so many of us who go through this. And I, and if I'm going to be able to heal women, then I need to be able to know what hurt feels like. I need to be able to know what, what they've been through actually feels like. So that way they can connect to it, they can relate to it, and we can help each other grow past it. Because that's exactly what happened to me. So, like, I started... It was after that it happened to me that I ended up confessing it to other women that I knew, um, including like, you know, the friends around me, just all types of people. I just started confessing it to them just to find out that it's happened to them, too. So then I'm like, OK, has it happened again? Some of them it hasn't. Some of them it has. Um, and my best friend, I didn't even know that she had went through that years and years ago when we were in high school. She had never told me anything but when I told her that it happened to me, it just felt so good to have women around. Oh, my gosh. It was just the most healing thing. That's when I really, really realized, for real, for real, how necessary we are for each other's growth and healing. Because, like I say, we just go through many of the same things. And we just have to be there to talk to each other about them. Just as I'm trying to do right now. I'm talking to y'all, the community. I'm making myself vulnerable to you all because I feel like we could all grow from this. People done been through this. And I don't know if we've all learned the same things. But this is just my journey. This is what I can share from what I've learned, you know. Um, so... Either way, like I say, 
the women around me, they really, really made a big impact. Uh, one of the things that they did was they were super overprotective. Like, I don't have women like, yo, what's his number? What's his number? Calling me one after another. What's his number? My granny, my sister, my cousins, everybody. Like, what's his number? You know, like, the women around me are some Gs. They don't mind getting down for the ones they love. And I love it, man. Like, I felt so loved, so supported, so healed, you know, and they made it so that I didn't go around that nigga. Like, just by telling them, telling them was important so that it could give me the strength to stick to what I knew that I deserved, which is not to go back, to let him suffer, to let him learn on his own. You know, I don't deserve that. And to have women around you telling you you don't deserve that. It's just, it was really healing for me. It was necessary for me. And I'm just really, really appreciative for having them there. Um, another thing that a woman told me is that, like, shit, I was coming back from Chicago. And I was in an Uber with a young sister who was a little older than me, you could tell. But regardless, she was still young. The spirit led me to just tell her what had just happened. And then she tells me how she was with the female for... Uh, six years and she was uh, abused by that woman for four out of those six years and she was giving me so much life just from her experience she was giving me so much life she's one of those women who told me look if they do it once they'll do it again period you know leave that alone period you know but she's also the one who I told about the circumstance or the situation and you know how I told y'all that I, I, I hit him when he called me a slut. I pushed him real hard. She was the first one to tell me, like, look, I'm not saying in any way that the man is right for putting his hands on you. Because, like, period. Because it's no excuse. But being with a woman, what I realized is that, you know, you don't have that separation, that barrier or like man, woman. Don't put your don't put your hands on a woman. Don't matter if a woman hits you, you better not put your hands on her. She said that by in her experience by being with a woman, what she learned is just if you don't want to be touched, don't touch nobody. Keep your hands to yourself. Respect their bodies and respect yours. Like if you don't want things to get heated, just for real, keep the respect. And if you can't find yourself keeping respect, if y'all can't be together without touching each other violently, leave it alone. And that really, really helped me and changed my life because I'm like, look, you know, it really is so many women out here. And this wasn't me, but still there's so many women out here that are hitting on men, you know, just because they believe that the man shouldn't hit them back. But just because he shouldn't hit you back don't mean that he won't hit you back. That's the difference. So I learned like, damn, don't hit the man because he might just want to hit you back. And at least if he do hit you back, don't don't give him no reason to like. And I'm not saying that it's of course, like I'm saying, I'm not saying it's the woman's fault at all. But we do all contribute. We we must be accountable. We must own up to how we all made a situation what it was. And that's how I made it what it was. I did push him. And I do own up for th to that. And I do own up to the fact that I didn't see that anger in his eyes until after I did that. And I do own up. And I reflected and I learned about myself that I have fire within me. I have things within myself that needs to be handled, which is why that situation even ha happened. You know, as much as he has things that he needs to handle, you know, like, or even more things. I'm not really sure. But regardless, I'm just trying to let y'all know that we all do contribute to everything. So moving forward, another thing that a sister told me. So that sister told me, like, you know, that if they do it once, they'll definitely do it again. I think the biggest advice that I got and what I loved the most was when I had a sister who told me, well, because many people do want to know, like, if a man hits me, will he hit me again? So I really just started asking many women that, like, have it happened to them again? You know, and my granny, she was uh, hit by my granddaddy. Uh, we got older women that was hit once by their man up until they fucking hit the fuck out of their ass or beat their ass and then a man ain't never tried to touch him again like my granny she said she ain't never had them problems with my granddaddy again the older women said they had never had them problems with the men again you know and then i have another sister who told me the same thing like it happened to her once but she never had those problems again from them but then there are quite of course also women who've had those problems again and what my sister told me she was like look if you 
I'm not going to tell you not to be with him. And I'm not going to tell you to be with him. But what I will tell you is this. If a man puts his hands on you, he's showing you what he's capable of. I'm not saying he's going to do it again. But I'm telling you that he's showing you what he's capable of. That means that you are choosing to be along that journey with him as he gets better and better if that's what he's actually committed to growing you are saying and you're choosing to be along that journey with him no matter what it looks like and he might fuck up in the midst of that journey and that's what she told me and it was like the realest thing that i could possibly think of because it gives you choice and i don't think that the best thing to do when women go through domestic uh violence it's to tell him never get back with the dude, leave him all the way alone. Like, I don't think that's the best way. I think that the best way is to be real in a way that allows her to make the choice for herself. So that way she knows I'm submitting myself to this experience. You know, not like I'm being forced not to ever be with him because then that's when resistance comes into play and where she could feel like, okay, maybe I should really get back with him. But just to have that in your head at all times, it just really done me some good. So... That's really helped. Women have really, really helped in my life. And I mean, the main other thing is just that I wish that it wasn't the women, though, y'all. I wish that my men could have helped me. I wish that it would have never happened. But I'm also happy that it did because it's taught me so many things, so many things. It's never going to happen to me again. I promise you. Um, or if it did, I know how I would respond to it now because we can't control other people's actions and we don't always know that that's what's gonna come but if a man puts his hands on you it's because he's not really a man it's because he feels that he's not strong enough to deal with other men so now somehow to feel like masculine he needs to degrade you no real man is going to put his hands on a woman I've learned that no real man needs to put his hands on a woman a woman can talk 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 she could slap, slap, slap. That should never be enough for a man who's supposed to be strong to decide to put his hands on you. So just know where he is. Don't allow, don't, don't allow men who are not committed to their growth or their journey of becoming a man to even come in on that ass. You know, um, many little boys put their hands on women. Only little boys put their hands on women. Um, and like I was trying to say, and I told my dad, the reason that that happened to me was because that man knew that there was no man at home waiting with his gun to protect me. There was no man that I could count on and depend on for my safety. There aren't any men around me who are taking up for me. They are women. Women are around me taking up for me. Women don't mind going to the trenches. Women don't mind getting a knife or a gun or whatever they need in order to go make sure that things get done. I don't have any men around me doing that. And if only these men knew that we had somebody, some people at home protecting us, these things wouldn't happen. They would be too afraid to ever put their hands on us. So men, please... Be the protectors that y'all supposed to be. Understand that we are y'all mothers. We are the mothers of your children. We are your daughters. We are your aunts. We are your sisters. We are everything. Without us, this nation does not survive. Period. And if that's true, y'all need to stop being so dedicated to your friends and making sure your friends are happy and start speaking up. And fighting the men who put their hands on women who are not physically strong enough to fight them back. Okay? So that's really all I got. I know this video was a little longer than my other videos, but that is perfectly fine. I am not going to be apologetic about that. And if y'all needed more information, if y'all wanted more from me about this or anything else... Please reach out. Please leave something in my comment section or whatever. It doesn't matter. Let's make this a discussion and let's make sure that this problem is not a problem that continues, especially within the black community, because I'm sorry. I see it way too often and I see black men standing there on the side looking way too often and I'm over it. I'm tired of hearing black men allowing women to call, I mean, allowing other men to call women bitches and hoes and sluts and put their hands on them 
Why they standing right there? If you are standing there and allowing a so supposed to be man to do that to a woman, that means you ain't no man. You ain't man enough to actually stand up to another little boy. Then you ain't a man. So come on, y'all. Let's get it together, man. Let's stop letting this happen to us, you know. Um, and let's heal past it. Get with your group. Tell your women about it. Like, ladies, a lot of y'all are going through this and not saying nothing. Like, my best friend, she never said anything to me. Talk to the women around you. You would be surprised that they've even know, like, been through this, too. You know, so let's just get it together. I love y'all. Um, you know, I'm clearly very, very passionate right now. And that's just that. Comments. This is something to be commented on if y'all have had the experience. If y'all have any words. For people that I didn't say here, go ahead. Say what you got to say too. Like, subscribe. If you feel like this channel is something that might be beneficial for you, do whatever you feel like you need to do for yourself. Let's continue to grow. Let's continue to heal. And let's continue to be vulnerable so that other people can learn from our experiences and grow from those as well. All right, family. I love you so much. Peace, love, black power, all day, every day. Ain't no other way. Women. You are powerful beyond measure. You are powerful. A man putting his hands on you got nothing to do with you. Like I said, it has everything to do with him. He ain't there yet. He ain't ready to be a man yet. But don't ever put it on you. Don't let your light diminish because somebody else darkness is trying to take over. Keep living in light, man. Keep living in light. You deserve to live in light. Let's do it, okay? I love you. Peace.